When I looked at school infrastructure, particularly water, sanitation, and hygiene, I was struck. We could not rebuild what was. We needed to do something radically different. George Warner, Minister of Education for Liberia, thank you for coming into AEI to, to talk to us today. Thank you, Nat, for the invitation. So early in 2016, you announced a bold plan of reform for Liberian public education, the Partnership Schools for Liberia. But for an American audience, uh, I think it's useful to have a little context. So could you sort of give us the groundwork? When, when you started as the Minister of Education in Liberia in 2015, what was sort of the status of public education in Liberia? So. Um, I got to the Ministry of Education um, when Ebola was waning, so to speak. We had gotten help from the United States government to, to eradicate Ebola. And after that, I was charged with the responsibility, after schools had been closed for almost a year, to reopen schools and get the system going again. So the first thing I did was to assess what the issues were. So I took a listening tour of the entire country. And what I found, what I heard, um, was not so good. There was chronic absenteeism. And these teachers were on payroll, but many of them not showing up to teach. The learning outcomes were not very good, more so for girls than for boys. The diversity in the teaching faculty, faculty was not that good either. And the gap was too wide, 24% uh, female, the rest um, male. And when I looked at school infrastructure, particularly water, sanitation, and hygiene, I was uh, struck. We could not rebuild what was. We needed to do something radically different. And so PSL was thought of as a way to partner with proving private prov uh, providers to accelerate um, the improvement of learning outcomes for Liberian children. And so when you went to look for these providers, you looked inside Liberia and outside Liberia, what were you looking for for the providers to bring to the table? Look, I had taught in several countries, um, in Liberia, in Nigeria, in South Africa, in Ghana, in Kenya, and here in the U.S. And I became powerfully conscious of what existed elsewhere and how my country had fallen behind. And so the first thing I wanted to know was what in the world there was about low cost education, the focus being on quality. And so somebody suggested Bridge International Academies to me. So I flew to East Africa to see what Bridge was doing there. I went to Kenya, I went to Uganda, I saw their schools, I spoke to parents, I spoke to school administrators, to community heads, and I visited the classrooms and I saw firsthand that children were actually reading at grade level in these poor slum areas as we call them. And these schools existed side by side, public schools that in many ways were in better conditions. But parents were opting for the British schools in comparison to the public schools. And what I saw wowed me in terms of the quality of uh, learning outcomes for kids. So when I went back to Liberia, I thought to myself, I needed a hybrid of a partnership, the best of what proving providers do in the private sector and what government was capable of doing, be the regulator, provide the policy platform and let these private providers manage the schools efficiently. And so that's what we decided to do. So what are some of the things that the um, operators that you've brought on have been able to do that uh, you think demonstrate their potential for changing Liberian education? So there are, we have commissioned an international evaluation through the Innovations for Poverty Action, IPA, 
and uh, with the Center for Global Development. So we have we have the baseline now. The midline is coming out sometimes in August this year. So we work for that scientific evidence. What I see as I go around is behavior change. I, I see teachers who are committed. I see communities that care about their schools. I see parents who have increased interest in what their children are doing. I see students that are present and want to learn. We've added ins instructional time, and so it's an extended day now, and that is being used well. We know that this behavior change is not only in the partnership schools, but it's beginning to affect the non-partnership schools too. So this is part of what we have been searching for, and um, we know that when the results come out, they will prove the point that in this day and age, I got to give you a context, 420 million young Africans between the ages of 15 and 35. In Liberia, 60% of our population under 35. What is a blessing could be a curse if we do not focus on education. And in Liberia, for the first time, we have a generation of children that doesn't know war. And if we don't focus on them as quickly, as efficiently as we can to improve the quality of teaching and teacher training and to make sure that incentives are there for everyone involved, for students, for parents, for teachers, to be able to deliver quality education. We miss a once in a lifetime opportunity for those kids. Right. Now, something that is hard for Western viewers and Americans to understand is the cost structure that you're working on in Liberia. In America, we average about $12,000 per pupil per year. And in Liberia, the government spends $50 per pupil per year. So that's a 240x difference, which is uh, hard to believe. So I, I wonder two things about this. First of all, how in, on earth do you get quality education for um, $50 per year, even with a uh, tremendously different cost of living? But also, how do Western providers work at that cost point? So let me give you a context here. The education budget for Liberia is, at least last year's, was around 41 million, right? Of that 41 million, 35 million is devoted to salaries. So actually, you've got nothing left for all the things that contribute to quality in the classroom. So what we do is pay teachers. Some of those teachers don't show up, right? So that is the $50 component. With the partnership schools through donors, particularly private foundations and all of this, we've added 50 to $60 for innovations in the system. So they get an extra 50 to $60. $50 if you're working near the capital city where you have road access. 60 when you lived in the countryside where infrastructure is poorer. Um, that is nothing still to give us what we want. Ideally, we should be able to spend pretty close to $150 per child per year to have everything we need, the teachers being there, the school quality in terms of infrastructure, wash, which is water, sanitation, and hygiene in the context of Ebola, um, making sure there are textbooks and the teachers are trained and paid on time where they work. If you want all these things to happen, you need to operate around $150 per year. The providers, um, they're mixed. We have eight of them, some for profit, others not for profit. I don't know any of them making a profit at this point, <laughs> yeah. operating at $50, which is government contribution, and another $50, which is philanthropic uh, contribution. As with any bold reform agenda, you have people who praise you and they have, you have your detractors. Um, and, and this has garnered some controversy. So um, my question to you is, of the concerns that sort of the detractors of the PSL program bring up, what concerns do you find that you share them? And what concerns do they bring up that you don't find compelling? The education reform is very conservative in the sense that it's stubborn to change. The language we all speak for education reform is more progressive than the actual reform itself because you're dealing with human capacity development. 
and there's a lot at stake as with health reform. So it's understandably so. I've had a barrage of uh, uh, opposition uh, emails from the teachers' unions, more so from the international community than from within Liberia. Really? Driven by people who don't really understand uh, what we are trying to accomplish. Here is an opportunity for once to make good on the promise of free education. The 27,000 kids in this school don't pay a damn thing. Yeah. And it is making good on what the law says should be free, compulsory, primary, basic education. And that is happening. Teachers are showing up in these schools and they are being held accountable. They are trained. They have extended instructional time. Everything you want the public school system to be at its ideal is happening in these schools. But the mischaracterization was that we were privatizing government schools. No, this is a partnership between proving private providers and the government to improve learning outcomes for children who would otherwise go to classrooms that are empty and just spend the whole day there hungry without any teacher in front of them. In the American media, and a number of times people have compared this to charter schools in the developing world or charter schools in Liberia. Now that's something that Americans understand, but it's not quite right. Can you just help me understand some of the fundamental differences between the partnership schools and charters? The money issue. <laughs> you know what the charter schools here get. That's not the issue. Our teachers in Liberia are government trained and government certified, and the government paid. Our schools are government owned, the government maintained. And so you see those differences. Um, what we've contracted the providers to do is to manage those schools on behalf of government. And the teachers' unions began by first mischaracterizing, saying that contracted companies like Bridge would bring teachers from outside of Liberia mm -hmm. to flood the system, which wasn't true. Liberia's got talent, and we, we use the public system to vet that talent with the providers and place them in the classroom. So there are some differences between what we do in Liberia and what is done here. In, uh, we don't do the choice thing and all that. Um, what I dreamt about and what I hope will happen, and there are many countries looking at Liberia, is look, we live in an era where we can no longer shy away from the fact that there's so much demand on public services for education and for health. And in spaces where, in countries where the government struggle to provide the fiscal space needed to grow the economy to fund these services, we can't continue to think as we used to. You have to think as it were outside of the box. Leverage blended funding to bring to a sector that needs it very urgently. In five years, what do you hope to see become of the Partnership Schools for Life? Children are in age-appropriate grades and reading at grade level. And teachers are trained, showing up every day, they are paid on time, and their profession is honored. And they consider teaching as an honorable career. And you're on your way. Fantastic. Well, George, thank you for coming thank in you, thank and you. talking with us. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Hey, everyone. That's the end of our discussion with George Warner, Minister of Education for Liberia. Thanks for watching. As always, let us know what other topics you'd like AEI scholars to cover on Viewpoint. And be sure to check out the rest of our videos and research from 